This is the second part of our first lecture on the basic definitions of objects in space. We've covered some specific things, stars, planets, and moons, and in this lecture I want to go on to collections of objects. We're going to go many, many, many times bigger. We'll learn more about the scale of the universe as we look at stuff in class, as we learn how to understand distances in astronomy, which will be something we repeatedly come back to over the semester, um, but we're getting much, much, much bigger as we go further and further out. So in this picture you can see, well, I've got planets, and that's Jupiter, Saturn, so that's probably Uranus and Neptune. Maybe you can make out Earth in there, Venus, Mars, Mercury so small on this scale we can't even see it. This is supposed to give you an idea of um, how big these are, how big the planets are relative to each other. So these are to scale in terms of size, but not of distance. Anyway, when you look at all of the planets together, hopefully we all know that that is what we call the solar system. And the solar system then, of course, is certainly, well, it's got to include the sun. Solar means sun. So it's got to include the sun. It's got to include everything that goes around the sun. That means all of the planets. It means all of the dwarf planets, which are also orbiting the sun. They just haven't cleared their orbits. And it includes the things that are orbiting the things that are orbiting the sun. It includes the moons of the planets and the moons of the dwarf planets. Everything that goes around the sun. That also includes the asteroids and the comets. That is all part of the solar system. Now, as I said in the first part of the lecture, we have found planets around other stars now. So we needed a, a word to refer to these sets of planets around other stars, just like we have a, a term for the things that orbit our star. And so if you ever encounter that, that would be called a stellar system. A stellar system would be a star and everything that orbits it. We won't talk about that too much in this class, but it's something you may encounter. Now, our solar system is just a very, very, very teeny tiny speck in a much, much larger thing. If you think about all of the stars out there, we can't even come close to seeing all the stars out there with our naked eye. We can't even come close. But there are billions of stars out there. And when you take all of the stars together, that makes up the galaxy. This is an artist's picture of the galaxy because we're inside the galaxy. We can't take a picture of the galaxy if we're in the middle of it. So um, like you could imagine, say, being a blueberry in a blueberry muffin. You can't take a picture of the muffin if you're inside the muffin. Same deal with us being in the galaxy. So this is an artist's picture. And our galaxy is called the Milky Way, if you have ever heard of that. Well, what is a galaxy? A galaxy is a group of hundreds of billions of stars. That is a lot of stars. If you look outside in Houston, you barely see any stars. You could certainly count them up easily, what you can see in Houston. But there are hundreds of billions of stars out there. These things are all staying together in a big group like this because of their gravity. Their gravity is pulling them all together. So. They maintain this sort of spiral pattern. There is this sort of line across the middle that's called a bar. So some galaxies have that, some don't. Some have this spiral pattern like ours does, some don't. But they're all held together by gravity and they're all orbiting around the middle. We'll learn later in the semester that down in the middle there is a gigantic black hole, but we're not going to get sucked into it. That's not something we need to worry about and we'll learn why that is later on in the semester too. If this were our galaxy, this is about where we would be. So we're about two-thirds of the way out from the center. You may notice this scale over here. I don't know if you can read this, but this line is supposed to represent 10,000 light years. More about light years in the next lecture, but this is how far light travels in one year. So that's how much a light year is. This is 10,000 of those, and you can see that this is many tens of thousands of light years across. Galaxies are ridiculously huge. Absolutely ridiculously huge. 
And by the way, the things that have gone the furthest from Earth that have been made by humans have not even gone one light year away from Earth yet. So we have not gotten very far with our spacecraft. Galaxies tend to come in groups. Each time you find something in space, you can look at the individual object, but then it tends to come in a group. And galaxies come in groups too. Now these groups can vary in size. Some groups only have a few galaxies. Some groups have thousands of galaxies. The one that we happen to be a member of is called the local group. There's only a few galaxies in it. Um, we're, we're one of the two big ones. There's another one called the Andromeda Galaxy that's about the same size as us. And then there's some other little galaxies like the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds and some other ones that have weird names that you would never have heard of. Um, we're a relatively small galaxy cluster. That's called the local group. Um, but there are other galaxy clusters out there that have thousands of galaxies in one cluster. And in a cluster, all of the galaxies are pulling on each other, pulling each other together with their gravity. So in our case, the big galaxies, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy, are pulling the little galaxies towards us, and eventually those little galaxies are going to become part of the big one. And then finally, the universe. The universe is everything. Everything that exists is part of the universe. Every piece of matter, every atom out there, all the energy, all the light, all the x-rays and radio waves and all of that, that's part of the universe. Space itself, time, is part of the universe. Everything that exists is the universe. Now, I do want to emphasize, don't mix up galaxy and universe. That's a real pet peeve of mine. I really want you to get this one distinct because there are billions of galaxies in the whole universe, hundreds of billions of galaxies in the whole universe. The universe is big and it is everything. Galaxies are big, but they're only one small thing in the entire universe.